I had no idea what the majority of these golf clubs were when I bought them. And to be honest, that's not something I'd recommend. It's been an incredibly long time since I bought something off Facebook Marketplace. And this is the first deal. Seems like forever that I've been able to bring to the channel. However, I was quite eager to go and collect it. I didn't really check, well, what was in the bag? Oh! <laughs> And I'm going to tell you straight away, I have paid £200 for this entire golf set. And at the time, I thought that was an outrageous steal. But as I started looking a bit closer, well, let's just say it got a bit ropey. Up first, to add to the £200 total of getting our value back, Top Flight 3 Rescue. If only I could say this was the worst club in the golf set. So I'm going to show you the picture that piqued my interest when I saw this on Facebook Marketplace. And as I said, it's been incredibly difficult to find any kind of deals over the last four to five months. Hence why the Builder Bag Challenge kind of fizzled out. But that is coming back next year and I will be doing them monthly, starting from £10. And whatever value we get up to at the end of the month, I will be giving that away to one of you guys. But as you can see from this photo, there was a nice looking bag. There was a nice looking trolley. I didn't really know the make or brand. And I saw some familiar head covers. I saw some familiar paint jobs. And I thought, well, as long as the bag and trolley work and that set of irons is genuine, well, that basically covers the cost of the 200 pounds and anything else on top well, it's just a bit of a bonus. Now we're gonna do a price check of all the clubs here in the bag and trolley. I actually don't know the make or brand of them, so I need to check on eBay what they sell for roughly, as that probably will be the main bulk of my money back. I definitely didn't lose money throughout this deal, but the one thing I definitely want you guys to take away from this is always check condition very closely if you were to pick something up secondhand in person, as this deal is a good deal, but could have been phenomenal if, well, some of the clubs were intact. What a perfect opportunity to use some of my recently newly acquired wedges in the bag. And sadly, I was hoping for a Vokey. I was hoping for a Mac Daddy. I was hoping for something worth a bit of value at the bottom end of the bag, but that is the gamble you pay. These four wedges, I honestly had no idea from the photos what we were getting. And these two are the only two that can provide a tiny bit of value. This one, I would say roughly 20 to 30 pounds once you take eBay and everything else off, but it's gonna sit there for a while. Essentially, you're looking for someone that has lost their burner, regular flex 2.0 sandwich. In the pandemic, this probably would have sold for 20 to 25 pounds at the moment where the market is. To be honest, I wouldn't waste your money as there's a lot better options out there for a similar value. That being said, I'm in a bunker 120 yards away from the green. Hopefully this bad boy will do the job. Let's move on to some of the clubs that definitely piqued my interest and why I was quite hasty. And this is one of the clubs that turned out better than I thought. It doesn't have a head cover, unfortunately, but this is quite a unique tailor-made spider mallet putter. As you can see there, it's got 31 to 35 inches, meaning that you can essentially hold it where you like. And I don't think this is the original grip, but actually this grip that I have here is in really good condition. But a nice little tailor-made unique putter, and I'd probably value this around 45 to 50 pounds in its current condition without a head cover. So that was a nice little surprise in the bottom end of the bag. And collectively, the only two usable wedges around the 40 pound mark for the both of them, were around 80 pounds for the total. Meaning that I was relying on some of the woods being relatively in good condition. And that is exactly what this isn't. This Mizuno JPX 850 fairway wood has definitely seen better days. I don't think structurally there's anything wrong with it in terms of hairline cracks or dents, you name it. But without a head cover, it rattling about in the bag is definitely seen better days. But here's the good thing. You can get a great condition one of these for not that much money, which isn't good for me as I'm not going to get much for whatever this will go for in its condition. 
but Mizuno JPX 900, 850, 800 in the electric blue for whatever reason, just don't do that well on the second hand market. And it means you can pick up a great little deal for not that much money. Now I can spot this head cover from a mile off. And originally the description said R1 driver. I thought there might be a small chance that there's actually an M1 driver underneath and it was a typo. Sadly, that was not the case and it got worse from then on out. Very similar to the Mizuno JPX fairway wood. This has seen better days. Not only that though, we've got more structural damage than the fairway itself. That little hairline crack around the hosel effectively means that its lifetime is somewhat set. How long this will last, nobody actually knows. However, one of the best looking tailor-made drivers back in the day with that R1 graphic in the back of the head there. This was an absolute unit in terms of distance. And sadly, as you can see, another little dent in the top of the crown, where again, you can see it almost crumpled up on the top of the ridge there. So what I thought could have been my winners, what I thought could have been my profit through this deal, tended not to be the case. That being said, we're not at all a loss. The main component of this bag is actually in very good condition. To be fair, one thing I haven't actually checked before we get onto the irons is actually what's in the golf bag itself. And um, uh, if there's anything hidden in the pockets, which I'm not, quite sure if there's any hidden values. What do we have here? Oh, well, they're definitely gonna come in handy for me. I've definitely had some great surprises over the years when it comes to uh, hidden stuff in the pockets. Galvin Green waterproof jacket and trouser set, which is number one. Some half decent golf balls. Are these some um, TP5s that we got here? Tall preferred, tall preferred. No, nothing of interest, sadly, in the pockets, but I have now done some research on this golf bag. A lot of these seem to be sold in America for quite a bit of money as well. I don't think this is the newest, latest and greatest, but I've seen some of these bags go for 140, 150 pounds. And to be honest, it does look like a high quality waterproof bag. So I think we might have accidentally stumbled and got very lucky in terms of getting some of the value back throughout this golf bag before we even get to the irons. That being said, second-hand golf bags and trolleys aren't the easiest to sell. So I'm gonna put a flat out value of 80 pounds for the trolley in the bag on top of what we already have, which is about 180 pounds. If I include 40 pounds for the driver and the fairway, considering the condition that they're actually in. Now the only clubs in the entire set that I knew 100% actually were were these tailor-made M4 irons. And the whole reason that I took the trip to go and pick up this set, as I knew that if these were in good condition, that is basically the money back for the set. And that's why I like these kinds of videos. And there would have had to be something severely wrong with these irons not to fetch some kind of value. But to be honest, after looking at everything else in the bag, I was somewhat hesitant when I was cleaning these up but they look great. They're in great condition. The shafts aren't bent, there aren't dinks. The grips definitely have plenty of life back in them. And also looking at eBay recently sold, five to pitching wedge is roughly around 200 pounds on the dot. So when I add up all the bits and bobs, as well as these irons, trolley bag, I think we're around about the 400 pound mark. But I do want you guys to make sure you pay attention when you do buy stuff secondhand to double check the heads, the shafts, the necks, the grips. as one small crack, dent here, there and everywhere, which can mean the difference between a great value buy and something that's completely useless. Guys, if you like this video, you're probably gonna like my American golf bargain find that I found in store and also made a bit of money on afterwards. Catch you guys there.